Eternal God, our Father, we are so grateful, Lord, that you have blessed us. You have blessed us beyond measure. And you've given us the privilege today to come together and worship you and you alone in spirit and in truth. We pray that you'd bring every mind and every thought into the captivity of your will, that as the word of God is sung or spoken, may we receive it with gladness in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, welcome to the Villages Community Chapel's final worship service of 2023. Thank you for spending a little bit of your Sunday with us here today. Um, I think the Niners can do without us for an hour because they don't have much competition today. I say. <laughs> Thank you to all of today's volunteers. We literally could not do it without you. We wouldn't have this altar, we wouldn't have programs, we wouldn't have cookies, we wouldn't have coffee. So uh, thank you to our friends and neighbors in the Catholic community um, who purchased today's shared flowers. I just want to let you know that the flowers after the service today are going to go to Carol Norton, the wife of our former public safety um, director, Steve Norton, who passed away suddenly recently. So Carol's going to get the flowers from both congregations. Thank you. And I want to do a big shout out to our faithful prayer team. They've been very busy the last few weeks. For some reason, the holiday season is a big one. Um, so we continue to be astonished by the power of prayer and God's faithfulness in hearing our concerns and responding in appropriate ways with miraculous powers of healing. Those of us who have benefited from these shared prayers are eternally grateful. Welcome to any guests visiting us today. We appreciate your presence. We hope that your needs are met here today. And we invite you across the hall after services for co the aforementioned coffee and cookies. Um, it's a pretty quiet day for announcements. But the one announcement that we have is very important. Uh, on this last day of 2023, we begin to seriously look forward to 2024. Good things are happening here in the chapel. And we want to be a blessing to even more people in 2024. We're going to need your help to make that happen. Inside your bulletin today are the volunteer sheets. Even if you've filled them out before, please do it again. Um, leave these on the table out front and we'll get them to Lucinda who will coordinate them all together. So, on to the official part. As we prepare for worship today, Lucinda, if, if you're a speaker, Lucinda sends you the um, bulletin on Wednesday. So you have from Wednesday to Sunday to figure out what you're going to say. Uh, so I, was, so I had the advance notice to see that Pastor Bill's going to teach in John today. Um, so coincidentally, my small group Bible study is also studying the book of John currently. What was real interesting, maybe, to share is that it was, it was a kind of a controversial decision amongst us. Um, some of us considered, some of us, considered John perhaps too familiar. Um, we've been here a long time. We've studied this before. <laughs> uh, all but one of us had studied, had done studies on John before. Um, we thought maybe we should move on to something more challenging, something more uh, less familiar. But then one of our members gave a very moving testimony on how John was responsible for reigniting his faith at a time when he was floundering. Several years ago, he was floundering and he was asking everyone he knew to be a Christian about how they undergirded their faith. Um, he happened to ask one of his grandchildren, <laughs> a very young girl, about what did she, how did she support her faith and understand her faith. Um, well, she was young and, and too flustered to explain it in detail, 
And so finally, in frustration, she said, read John. <laughs> um, so he said that he did, and he read it like 10 times that weekend. And it was good advice. But he felt it gave him reignition and that that's what he needed. And who doesn't need that? <laughs> so we're, we're finding in our studies, I don't want to step on anything Bill's going to tell you later, I don't think I will, but we're finding that there is a simplicity and an encouragement in John. But when you get under the surface of it, there's depth beyond measure. It's easy to understand the concept of love for one another, but how hard is that to put into action? <laughs> Very hard. One helpful thing I recently read is that Jesus calls us to a life that values others, serves others, and loves others. That's beautifully said. And that this love is best practiced in a community with other believers. Rather than a random assortment of individuals, each living their best Christian life in isolation, Jesus envisions a thriving church community characterized by Christ-like love for one another. So this is genius. We all need help, so let's meet in a place where we can help one another. So I pray, Jesus, we're broken people living in a broken world. Please send us opportunities to value, serve, and love others. Please help us to recognize these opportunities and guide us in responding humbly in ways that are pleasing to you. Amen. This is a very special song from my wife and I, and she couldn't be here today. She got a cold from her great-grandchildren. <laughs> they, like, they like to bring us little special things, you know. But uh, I thought of, you know, a song that I could sing, and, and, uh, and she says, well, why don't you sing my tribute? And I said, that's wonderful, because the first words is, how can I say thanks? And when we look at this past year, I think we can all say that in our hearts. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you came to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that i am and ever hope to be i owe it all to him to god be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things he has done with his blood he has saved me with his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord to thee and should I gain any praise let it go to Calvary with his blood he has saved me with his power he has raised me to God be the glory 
for the things he has done. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And should I gain any praise, I'll let it go to Calvary with his blood. He has saved me with his power. He has raised me to God be the glory for the things, for the things, for the things he has You just don't know. I could just preach right now. <laughs> Thank you, Doug and um, Catherine and Tammy. Um, God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. He's been more good to us than we have been to ourselves. And it's such a blessed day to be in your presence as we say goodbye to 2023 and all the blessings and the curses or whatever. We say goodbye to that and enter into a new experience with our God who loves us dearly. And uh, we pray that you will feel his love in this place today. Let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful, truly grateful for the work that you've done in our lives. You have loved us with a love that we can't fully comprehend. But Lord, we know that we are loved by the Father, for you have given us precious gifts that we might be a reflection of you in this earth. And Father, we pray that every heart, every ear, may hear and feel what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father, we bless you, and we praise you, and we pray that you would give us clarity of thought and clarity of speech as we speak the word of Jesus Christ. Lord, as you've taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Father, we pray your blessings on Willie May. And Father, we pray that you will lead her and guide her into the place where she is to be and give her your peace. Father, we pray your blessings on Gloria. We ask that you will continue to strengthen her. And Lord, you are the great deliverer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm excited to be here. I don't know about you. <laughs> Amen. I'm up on my feet. Praise God. Uh, some of you and some of them thought I was down for the count. But um, I had, um, for those of you that don't know, I had to uh, 
go to the hospital. I had a gallbladder attack, and it was the third time I've had that experience. And um, I didn't get home until 5 in the morning. The following morning, they kept me and did all these x-rays, and I told them before, I said, all you got to do is just check my chart before, and you know that I have gallstones, and I just need you to take them out. And they says, well, we can't just go and do that. Uh, it has to be serious because I wasn't in any pain at that time. But uh, in any event, um, there's no fear when you know who you belong to. Amen. And even when I had the heart transplant, I, there was no fear because I knew that I belonged to the Lord. It was no time to question whether the Lord was with me or not, or whether it was his will or not, I just had peace of mind that I was in the will of God. And when you have perfect love, it casts out all fear. And if God, through Jesus Christ, does not give us perfect love, then we have fear to wrestle with. I know who I belong to. And so um, I just wanted to give you some brief announcements. Beginning January the 11th, my small group will be opening up, and we will be doing the second book of Dr. Uh, David Jeremiah, The Great Disappearance, on Thursday from 1 to 2.30. Um, we have completed the book of signs, and before that we did the study on revelations. So we're just moving right ahead. And so I felt impressed by the Spirit of God that I need to open this up to the congregation for those of you that would like to uh, join the, the uh, study on the great disappearance that Dr. Jeremiah, uh, David Jeremiah has conducted. And uh, you can get your book from Amazon or you can get your book from Christian uh, bookstores, uh, christianbooks.com, and they have the better price. I think it's, it was the eleven ninety nine, dollars and um, the other one has it for a, a bigger price. So we will be doing that study, and also in beginning January the 9th, we will be doing Grief Share again. Uh, we thought that we will be doing it this year here, but with the loss of our pastor, Tim, it's going to be at the Evergreen Church again, and we have room for 20 people. We'll probably break up into two classes. I will be instructing along with another uh, brother and whoever else. Uh, uh, if you're interested, call the office and let them know to put your name and I'll give you further instructions on that. Also, for worship leaders, we will be having a meeting in January and just want you to be aware of that. Um, so that's coming up. All of that done, I'd like to talk to you a few minutes about your gift, your Christmas gift that you received this past Christmas and uh, Christmas before. What, did, did it... Uh, did it fulfill your desires? Did it fulfill a need that you had, the Christmas gift that you received? Or was it just, ah, uh, I've had this before. Uh, I got two of these already. I got three of those. And it just, I don't know why people just keep giving me this. That's not the gift I'm talking about. I want to talk to you a minute for our response to love. A response to love. I was uh, reading a story about this lady that had this gentleman, and he said that he loved her, and she had questions whether he really loved her or not. And so she had a friend that she says, well, you know, he says he loves me, but I have some, you know, I don't, I'm really not sure. And he says, well, I will, I will uh, show you if he loves you or not. So he um, pretended to be someone that would attack them. And they were coming, 
And he approached them to, as if he was going to attack them. And he ran off and left her. So she came to the realization that he really didn't love her. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Our scripture reference this morning is in chapter 15 of John. This, these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I've commanded you to do. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus is not at, uh, um, advising or, or suggesting to his disciples, love one another. I want you to love one another. I want you to accept each other's faults and inconsistencies and each other's brokenness. I want you to love one another as I have loved you. He is speaking with ultimate and absolute authority when he says, this is my commandment. And a commandment is not optional, is it? If your boss says you need to be on time because it's critical, if, if you're not on time, things go wrong. So it's critical for you to be on time at work. Now, if you cannot be on time, we're going to have to find a replacement. Boy, I tell you, you'd be there 30 minutes before your shift. So Jesus is saying it's not an option you have to love as I've loved you. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. There is a difference between suggesting and commanding that we do as he desires. You know, sometimes people can take it or leave it. Well, as a believer, you can't leave it. you got to take it. you got to receive it. Jesus has made it unmistakably clear that if we are to identify with him and make his life a model for our own, we must be ready and willing to accept suffering. Nobody enjoys suffering. Nobody wants to suffer. Nobody enjoys pain. Nobody enjoys dying for the sake of others. Because we are selfish people. It's all about me and my safety. It's all about me and what I want and what I need and what I look to hope for. But Jesus is pushing the envelope, isn't he? He's pushing the, the boundaries of us, isn't he? He's asking us to step out of yourselves. This is what it means to belong to Jesus Christ. This is what discipleship means, that we follow Jesus. It means adopting a style of life in which we care about others so much that we are willing to sacrifice on their behalf. Give of ourselves on their behalf. Now, it's easy for us to say, well, you know, I love you and I love you. And then all of a sudden, the thing turns upside down and people come after you and test you whether you really love this person or not. And sometimes our love is tested, whether we say that we love the Lord or not, or we say that we love each other or not. There is going to be a test to validate that love or the lack of. Verse 13, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Well, the young man that told the lady that he loved her, what happened? He wasn't willing to lay his life down. He says, well, you know, I love you under these conditions. I love you when I'm with you. I love to be around you. I love your, 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 your conversation. I, I love the way you look, I weigh the way that you 
uh, look at life. I love you, but oh, somebody's coming to. Uh, you go this way, I'll go that way. As opposed to defending his love. As opposed to standing in his love and protecting the things that we love. The greatest thing that we need to protect, beloved, is our hearts. Yeah. We have got to protect our hearts. You know why? Because out of our hearts are the issues of life. And people can speak into your lives and affect your heart and the way that you look at life and the way that you feel about life and the way that you feel about yourself and the way that you feel about others because of negativity. We have to guard our hearts as believers. We can't take offenses personal. You see, because uh, we are supposed to be Jesus' disciples and we're supposed to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're supposed to share the love of God with other people. But if we think that we're going to be offended or people are going to get upset because we share our love with them, then what, it's about, what is it about? How great is your love? How great is your commitment? Love... To truly love someone comes with a cost attached to the relationship. You and I can't really love someone while being selfish at the same time. Love crushes selfishness with sacrifice. You know why? You know why? God so loved you. And you wasn't paying God any attention. He was trying to speak to you. And he was trying to let you know that I'm here for you. When he was trying to guard you from situations that would affect you. You weren't paying him any attention. But he still loved you. And he still wanted a relationship with you. And you says, well, I'm not ready to hear from you. I can do this on my own. I've, I've done all that I've done without you. <laughs> Not realizing that without him, you could do nothing. You couldn't even breathe. You couldn't even stand to your feet without him. Yet, he was loving you all the time. All the time, he still loves you and wants a relationship with you. And you were not willing to let go of your, your will and say, yes, Lord, I, I, I want you in my life. You can't really love someone without, while being selfish. At the same time, love crushes selfishness with sacrifice. God sent his only begotten son so whoever believes in him would not perish. God does not want you to die. Hear me now. He never wanted you to die. He never wanted you to suffer. But there was a choice that Adam and Eve made. And as a result, we all die, right? We all get sick. We all become afflicted. We all suffer. That was not God's desire for us. And so God proving his love to us, letting us know how much he loved us, he was willing to sacrifice the greatest love. And he came incarnate in human flesh as the son of God and says, hey, I want you. I really want you. I really want you to be with me. I really want you to know how much I favor you, how much I desire you to, to know me, and not to feel afraid in life as you're confronted with 
problems and situations. I want you to know that I'm with you all the way. And we say, well, I'm not ready. I'm not willing. I have an agenda. I have goals. It's no longer having it your way. But you come to the realization that you need God's help. Philippians chapter 2 verse 4 says, Don't look out only for your own entrance, but take an interest in others too. When we ask God to give us more love for him, guess what happens? Situations occur, doesn't it? Things happen. People come into the picture. And we are obligated to respond. We ask God to give us more love for him. He gives us more challenges to love others. Hello. Whether or not people respond immediately, you are to love. Jesus says you are to love. You are to love. After all, he loves us, and still there are those who refuse to respond to his gift of eternal life. Mm. What's so complicated about that? What's so difficult about that, that God wants to have you eternally in his presence and that he's paved the way and he's provided a way for you to live debt-free, worry-free, peace beyond your imagination, to live into the beauty of security, of knowing that your life will go on and on and on. What's difficult with that? John 11, John, 1 John 11, thir, 11 and thir, through 13, he came to his own and his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believed in his name who were born not of blood nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. God wants you to know him. I can't communicate that any more clearer. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know him. He wants you to be one of the most secure persons on the planet. He desires that for you. He desires that you do not frustrate yourself. You do not worry yourself. You do not trouble yourself with the things that he has in his control. So that you can walk in this world confidently knowing that God goes before you. Praise the Lord, somebody. You see, if you had an army, you had an army that would go before you, you would be the most confident person on this planet. Because you know that somebody's going before you with power, with authority, with might, with strength, and all you have to do is just walk behind them and not be afraid. That's the kind of God that we serve who goes before us. Do you consider yourself a friend of God or an enemy of God? It is the will of God that we are saved from eternal damnation. Jesus said, I did not come here to condemn the world. See, people always want to condemn people. He says, I didn't come here to condemn the world. I came that the world may be saved. You see, because the world is already un under condemnation. Sickness and death and sorrow and suffering. 
and all of the calamity because the world we live in is under condemnation because of sin. On the other hand, he gives us the ability to exercise our free will. Thank the Lord for free will. It is a blessing and it can be a curse. If we exercise our free will the incorrect way. Well, you know, the law says I have the right to uh, bear guns. I have the right to protect my life. I have the right to do this. I have the right to do this. I have the right to do that. But those of you who have been sealed with the Spirit of God, you are to be led by whom? By the government? By you have a right to do this and a right to do that? You're to be led by the Spirit of God. Because the fact of the matter is, the Bible says, greater is he, hello, in you, who have been sealed with the Spirit of God, greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. So the glory of God, a part of God's glory, resides in every believer. You just have to tap into the power source to know that greater is he that is within you than any opposition that confronts you. Oh, glory to God. I hope that you can see it this morning. I hope that you can receive it this morning. I hope that you can believe it this morning. He gives us the ability to exercise our free will if it is his will to save us and if we resist, we are fighting against God. If he wills to save you, if he wills to help you and you refuse, you're fighting against him. And the Bible says that the way of a transgressor is hard. Having a hard time? How is your will working? How's it going for you? We know that in this world we're going to have trials and tribulations, but we can be of good cheer because we know that God is with us, and he that is within us is greater than our foes. When we acknowledge and accept his will for our lives, we become his friends by being saved through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse 14, and we're closing. You are truly my friends if you do what I command you to do. A friend is a person that you can trust with your life, who will give you support, especially in times of need. A friend will tell you the truth, even if it hurts you and your pride, to save you because they care. Some people says, well, you know, I would come, but he talks about death too much for me. <laughs> He's always talking about dying. Well, guess what? It's true. <laughs> but more than that, we have eternal life. God has given us eternal life, and we want the world to know that he gives and offers eternal life to those who receive his son. It's hard to imagine that a person would choose not to be a friend of God and live in the realm of all things being possible. Did you get that? Being a friend of God is living in a realm when all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. To be able to live that way, to know that all things are possible. Well, the record shows this. The record states this. Your history shows this. Well, what is possible? I serve a God where all things are possible. So regardless of the sentence, regardless of the condition, I know that God makes all things possible. Friendship with God requires you to believe that God has you in his best interest for your well-being. Romans 8.28 says, 8.28 says, We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called 
according to his purpose. All things, all things, all things. Now, what is all things, all things? All things. Everything pertaining to us as believers is working together for our good, whether we're uncomfortable with it or not. Whether we don't like the method or not. <laughs> And God's method, sometimes are, we, we, we question whether his method is, is right. Just imagine you're walking and following a choir, and you're approaching the enemy, and you're, and, and you're getting instructions, just march around the wall. And you're going out marching around the wall, praising God. People are mocking you and saying, oh, these people are crazy, whatever. That was God's method for deliverance. When they brought down the walls of Jericho, he says, go around the walls and walk around them seven days. And on the last day, what did they do? What did they do? They shouted. They blew the trumpet. And the walls came. The walls came climbing down. Sometimes... You need to walk around your situation and praise the Lord and thank the Lord. And sometimes you need to let out a shout of victory. Even if you don't see victory. I'm sure they didn't see walls coming down when they were walking around. I'm sure it took a while for those walls to come down as they shouted, but they came down in Jesus' name. The reason we know that this is working, that all things work together, it is because of the abiding presence of Holy Spirit. What is Holy Spirit's responsibility? To lead us and to guide us into all truth. And if we're walking in the Spirit, following the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, we're going to have victory. If you decide today to be a friend of God, all heaven backs you up. Jesus responds to the parable of the woman and her lost coin that she found in Luke chapter 15, verse 8 through 10. It says, or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Many intelligent people, they will make plans for their final disposition. And their earthly existence, they will make plans. Yeah, I got, I got my, you know, I, I, I got my burial plot. I, I've got this done. And on this day, I'm going to give you this and this and this and this and that and this and this and that. And they forget about eternity. Where are you going after that? You think you just were created to live and die? No, you were created for eternity. We were created for eternity, and in eternity we will dwell somewhere that we choose because we have free will. Hello. So I beg you today, choose correctly. Your application, the only option for believers are to love. There's no other option. Jesus didn't say hate your enemies. He says love your enemies. So if that is the bottom line that we have to love even our enemies, what does that tell us? We've got to be people of love and forgiveness and acceptance and people of grace. We have to bear the fruit of Holy Spirit. Real love causes you to be willing to lay down your life for your friends, for others. The effect of love outweighs any opposing foes. <laughs> How's your love? How's your gift? Did you receive the gift that 
God has given you or have you ignored it? Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. People suddenly leave here without any obvious effects, without any illnesses that were observed. They just drop dead. Know where you're going, beloved. If God would call you home, know where you're going. I'm just going to ask you, if you have not said yes to Christ, I'm going to ask you to say yes today. And I'm just going to ask you to stand on your feet if you are willing to say yes to Jesus Christ today. That's all. And if we are feeling uncomfortable, just imagine what it's going to be like when you come to the end of your days and remember that I was standing before you making this appeal for you to accept Jesus Christ and you said no. You will remember this day. You will remember this moment because God never gives up trying to get your attention to come to know his son. Father God, we thank you for the moving of your spirit. And Lord, we pray that you would uh, break our pride or our excuses because, Lord, some people think it's about religion. And, Lord, it's all about relationship. You want a relationship with your children that you created in your image and in your likeness. Lord, may they wrestle with this truth today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for your patience, your time, and your ear, and your heart. And I know for sure that the word of God will never, ever return void. Uh, because whatever has been sown shall be reaped, whether it's in the flesh or the spirit. The law of reciprocity is always at work. Let us stand. Father God, we bless your people. And we pray that the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit will rest upon each person. And Father God, I pray that you will continue to work your way of perfecting us, even in these vessels of clay. In Jesus' name, we pray for the peace of God. Rest and rule and reign upon each of us. Thank you for the health and strength that you've given us this day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.